President Biden is fond of saying, show me your budget and I will tell you what you value. If he's got money for people in Lebanon right now without Congress having to come back, what does it say about his values? There's not enough money right now for his people values, in North Carolina who his, need it. That's not misinformation. No, the way you're asking me the question is misinformation. Yes. What you're asking me is why Congress needs to come back and do their job. That's what you're asking me. Congress needs to come back and do their job and provide an extra assistance, extra funding to disaster relief fund. That's what Congress needs to do, and we're going to continue to urge that. You may not want that, but that's okay. That's what this president wants, and that's what the vice president wants. Thanks, everybody. I, yeah, just to be clear, that's not what Peter Ducey was asking at all. Peter Ducey was not asking that at all. Joining me now is New York Congressman Nick Langworthy. He's a member of the House Oversight, Agriculture, and Rules Committee. Congressman, thanks very much for being here. What do you want to say about this? Oh, thanks for what having me. What do you back. want to say about the fact that now a FEMA administrator, as well as Alejandro Mayorkas, have both told us that FEMA is out of money, and we know where they spent the money because Karine Jean Pierre told us that back in 2022. Here's what she said two years ago. Watch this. FEMA regional administrators have been meeting with city officials on site to coordinate to coordinate available federal uh, support from FEMA and other uh, federal agencies. Funding is also available through FEMA's emergency food and shelter program to eligible local governments and non-for-profit non organizations upon request uh, to support humanitarian relief for migrants. We'll continue to do what we can as a federal government to support uh, these cities as we rebuild our asylum program processing system after it was gutted uh, by the Trump administration. So it was completely the opposite. It was actually gutted by the Biden-Harris administration. They sent the money to illegal migrants. She told us so back in 2022. And now they're out of money. What are you going to do about it, Congressman? Well, I, it, additionally, I mean, they, they've just bled out the program. We, we have spent $1.4 billion dollars housing and feeding and caring for migrants that broke the laws of this country to come in. And now we have Americans in North Carolina uh, that are still stranded, that are in an extremely desperate situation. And, you know, the administration comes forward and says, here's $750. Good luck. I mean, this is, this is just a slap in the face to the hardworking men and women that pay the bills in this country, that we're focused on migrants over the needs of the American people. And, you know, Congress, before we, we broke for the election, uh, we fast-tracked $20 billion into FEMA for hurricane season that is currently available. And for Mayorkas uh, and the administration to say that that's depleted, that's just not accurate yet. Now, the, the needs are going to be very great. And, and I, I'm very sensitive to that. I mean, the people of Georgia and North Carolina that are suffering, we have to help them. And we have to make sure that that relief is in place. And that's what FEMA is for. And as we see Milton barreling towards Florida, I mean, I think we're all praying uh, right now. But the money's there to go out the door. I mean, we insisted on that as part of the continuing resolution. And for them to say that Congress needs to come back to Washington for an emergency session is nothing more than political grandstanding by Biden and Harris as they're trying to, you know, raise their sinking campaign. Well, so, I mean, you're talking about $20 billion that was approved as a result of this uh, continuing resolution. The inspector general has a report out saying that there's $6 billion uh, in, in, in FEMA money. Uh, which uh, may be frozen. Is, is, is that the issue, that it, it can't be used? I mean, where's the money? You just said it's $20 billion that was approved in the continuing resolution. Two FEMA people said it were, they're out of money. So where's the money? The, the speaker has made it very clear that throughout our, our continuing resolution you know, process that FEMA has been appropriated appropriate money to get through the election. And when we return in November, we can address a supplemental for FEMA. Uh, this inspector general's report begs a lot of questions uh, about the management of FEMA. I think Mayorkas, obviously, you know, there's a reason he was impeached. He hasn't done his job. Uh, but at this point, you know, we need FEMA to function. And they have the resources available. And the president, you know, should get his geniuses together and get this uh, forward. But we haven't seen the president with two hands on the wheel for a very long time. And in fact, you know, as you send Kamala Harris to call 
uh, Governor DeSantis in Florida ahead of Hurricane Melton. I mean, it just shows and begs the question, who's running the country right now? Uh, right. I mean, the president the uh, you know, needs to administer FEMA, and we need to make sure that they have the, you know, we have the full confidence in this agency. Okay, so obviously the the mismanagement of FEMA is also a major story. But I, I want to get your take on all of that money going to illegals, um, particularly in the face of this crime. As of July of this year, more than 660,000 illegal migrants with criminal histories have been released into the country, according to ICE. They're released into the country. The New York Post editorial board out with this. The next bipartisan border bill needs to target the 600,000 migrant criminals now roaming the country. They write this. It is not clear how many of these violent lawbreakers entered the country under the Harris-Biden administration, but it is plain that progressive sanctuary laws have been protecting them. Kamala Harris was pressed on her border policy in a rare 60 Minutes interview, and she had no answers. Here, here, here's what she said. Watch. Was it a mistake to loosen the immigration policies as much as you did? It's a long-standing problem, and solutions are at hand. And from day one, literally, we have been offering solutions. What I was asking was, was it a mistake to kind of allow that flood to happen in the first place? I think the policies that we have been proposing are about fixing a problem, not promoting a problem, okay? But, but the, the numbers did quadruple. And under the numbers your, under today, your watch. because of what we have done. Uh, it's just extraordinary. Congressman, your reaction? I mean, they've shown gross incompetence. And I, honestly, this is a willful decision. They made the decision to open this border, and it's made every American less safe. I mean, you see, they've had to ratchet up their uh, numbers on crime after they lied and said crime's gone down. We've seen the rise in migrant crime across this country while we're paying the bills for these people to live in places like New York City, where they get debit cards and free housing and health care. All right. of this on the back of the American taxpayer. Uh, while FEMA gets starved out. I well, mean, I even mean, this, in my own is, backyard. In yes, upstate, go ahead. In, in your own backyard. In, because in New York backyard, is just one of the states dealing with the migrant crime. In your district, in Buffalo, an illegal Venezuelan migrant was recently accused of murdering his wife with an axe. Yeah, we've had an axe murder for the first time in a long time in western New York. I mean, it, it, here he kills her in cold blood. You know, they kind of keep it quiet for a while. Now the facts have come. Uh, that he's a Venezuelan migrant that was hiding in plain sight, kills his wife with an axe, and and then uh, we're supposed to be sympathetic because he's now suicidal. Uh, but we also saw in Rochester a violent uh, killing of not just uh, the father and the mother, but their two little children uh, by a uh, a migrant, uh, you know, drug pin. Uh, and then just in in Broome County, luckily Buffalo ICE agents uh, captured a Peruvian killer. He was wanted in Peru for 23 murders, and they know that because his the faces and the names of the victims are tattooed on their body. Right. I mean, this right. is oh my this God. is what's happened just in upstate New York. So, uh, in, so how in, much how much did the axe murderer get? Okay, how much are these people getting? How much money? I mean, you say they're getting debit cards, they're getting health care, they're getting free room and board. So, how much did the ex the axe murderer get? I don't know that we'll ever get real honest answers uh, you know, okay. between Kathy okay. Hochul's administration and the Biden uh, administration okay. as okay. to yeah. how much benefits weighing on in on these folks. Congressman, thank you. Nick Langworthy.